In today's video, I'm going to show you my process for drawing these happy people illustrations. Most of my videos are about the painting side of things, but this one is going to focus on the sketching. However, I will show you the final painted illustration at the end. So I've got a pretty large Procreate document here. It's 4,000 pixels by 5,000. And for the brush, you can use whatever sketching pencil brush you want. Procreate comes with quite a few, but I'm going to use the uh, pencil that comes with the watercolor kit. And uh, I think what I want to do is make an illustration of like a woman holding a coffee cup or something. So what I'm going to do first is I'll make a circle for the head. I'll do a small circle for the neck. And then I usually do this kind of semi-circle shape for the body. And often this ends up a little bit too small, so I'm going to scale it up a little bit bigger. Now, I don't really like illustrations that are like head on. Uh, sometimes you got to do it like that, but I often like to do them kind of looking off to the side. So I'll draw a really faint line, uh, and this is usually the line where the nose and the mouth will be on. And I'll draw in those details really quick. And after that, I'll roughly sketch in the eyes and the ears as well. And I try to make the ears uh, end at the top of the eye. So the, imagine there's like a line going across. I'll make the ear off to the side, but the top of it is just there at the top of the eye. Then I'll do the cheeks. And once the face is just roughly laid out, I'll immediately go to focusing on like what they're doing because the rest of the body needs to be structured around that. Uh, I always find it's easier to just draw the hands floating in space and then kind of connect it to the body. Uh, just a personal preference for me. So I've got a, I've got a cup here and I notice that when I hold it, um, my thumb usually wants to go through uh, and then my hands are curving around the side. And once I've got that in my head, I'll just quickly and really, really roughly uh, sketch that out. And with hands and fingers, I always struggle and it takes me a few tries. Uh, but what I like to do sometimes is use the liquify tool to kind of fix it. So first, I'll just rough out uh, these fingers. And then I can go over here to the uh, adjustments and go to liquify. I'll set the momentum to zero, distortion to zero, uh, pressure at max, and I'll set the size just big enough to kind of fit in there. Uh, and this will let me kind of warp the hands and stretch them out and kind of adjust it until the proportions and also maybe where the fingers are bending makes a little bit more sense. But it's not going to be perfect and I'm still going to have to draw over this a few more times to get it right. So that looks okay. I still need to work on it a little bit more. But you know uh, how on the face here, I drew the center line? Uh, at this point, I've got to do the same thing to the body. And uh, you know, like this would be right down the center with the arms on either side. But I want him or her slightly turned. So this time I'll draw the center line off to the side. And then at this point, I can rough in the neck and start to see where this arm uh, and how it might connect to the body. So I'm thinking it's going to go something like this. And if that's the case, um, I need to kind of shorten the back and make it a little bit straighter. Uh, it can't really curve away like this anymore. And throughout this process, I'm really not worrying about proportions because just like I did with the hands using the warp tool, I can do that to the rest of the illustration and make the head bigger or smaller move the elbow so it you know kind of lines up in the middle a little bit better uh, any kind of changes like that are really easy to handle later on so next i'm just going to go through and start roughing in the other details like the the outfit the arm and the hair And after those details are filled in, I'll go in there with the eraser again, kind of at a large size, and I'll try to get rid of some of these excess lines. So 
So it often happens with me that my face details just become like uh, too big for the, for the head size. So I'm just gonna shrink everything. So I'm gonna use the selection tool set to freehand and I'll just circle around everything, including the ears, the eyes, and the cheeks. Then I'll use the arrow tool. I'll set it to uniform here. Then I can scale and just sort of reposition this. Usually I just need to lower it a little bit, uh, but I'll just position it so it looks a little bit more uh, nicer. I think that looks pretty good. Now I've got all these broken lines, so I'm gonna try to reconstruct that. And then again, I'll go in there with the eraser and get rid of some of those excess kind of confusing lines. And to finish up the face for now, I'm gonna add the kind of pupils so I can control which way she's looking. And sometimes if I wanna play with the expression, I can use the selection tool and I'll just circle both pupils then use the arrow tool and I can kind of move it around and kind of get an idea of uh, what I can do with this face. There we go. I actually think it looks cute if she's sort of looking away. So at this point, the rough sketch is done. We have the kind of uh, rough basis of the expression finished. We know what her hand is doing here. Uh, we just need to fix the proportions because like everything is messed up. Her elbow is in the wrong place. Uh, you know, her forearm is super, super weirdly long. So those kind of things don't look right and I'm gonna fix them with the adjustments. I'll go down to liquify. And just like I did with the hand, I'm gonna mess with the size, maybe use it a little bit larger. And I'm gonna play with uh, shrinking the head and warping this and trying to fix some of those issues. So for example, the elbow here, um, I can actually just move the whole elbow over and it's gonna warp some of my lines, but not a big deal because we can repair that later on when we do our kind of secondary uh, layer of sketching. And you'll notice while I was warping it and stuff, it really changed the character of her expression and just the overall emotion of the illustration. So uh, when I use the warp like this, I really am using it to adjust the feeling. I'm not trying to make it look closer like what I originally planned. So as I'm going through it this way, I'm sort of discovering uh, what this illustration actually looks like. So with that part done, I can move on and do the kind of secondary uh, sketch layer. So if I open the layers panel, here's what we did the sketch on. I'll make a new layer above it. And uh, this is the original sketch. I'll just lower it so it's pretty faint. I would usually lower it really, really low, but you won't be able to see this at all on camera. So I think I'll set it to around 50 or 40 or 50%. Now on the new layer above, I'll start sketching again. And this time I'm gonna be much more firm and clear. And I'm really trying to find the clear geometry here. So for example, uh, this is a pretty distinct curve. So I'm gonna follow that down the face. And I'm gonna go through the whole illustration and try to simplify it and make everything more clear. Now I have to give some special attention to the eyes. So I usually draw those like this. And once those are roughed out, you can turn off the original sketch, uh, redraw the pupils, then I'm gonna warp them again uh, to sort of get the right kind of angle and perspective there. There we go. Uh, the pupils ended up getting uh, kind of weirdly shifted and angled. 
So I'm gonna clear those and draw them again and make sure they're on the same plane. And if the pupils still don't look quite right, uh, you can always just kind of use the freehand selection here uh, and just kind of manually manipulate and move each one. There we go, that's much better. So at this point, the sketch could be done. Now, if you've watched uh, any of my other videos and used the sketches that I provide in the description, they look much more clean and sharp. And that's because I go over it one last time uh, with a really, really steady kind of ink brush. Uh, and that just makes them look kind of nicer for YouTube. But as long as it's clear enough like this, it's clear enough to paint. And uh, of course, if you wanna learn how to paint these kind of illustrations in watercolor, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Uh, but just in case you wanted to see, uh, here's what this uh, drawing looks like when I fully painted and turned it into a finished illustration. One thing that really stands out to me is how a good sketch varies really widely depending on what you want to do with that sketch. So in my case, the sketches by themselves, they just don't really look that great, but it doesn't bother me at all because I'm really used to painting and uh, I know from experience that it will look fine in the end. I think if you're just getting into illustration like this, it's better if you go through the whole process a few times, like all the way from sketch to the final finished painting. Uh, and over time, this will build your confidence and it will give you a better eye when you're sketching. And it's also gonna help you build your habit of always finishing your artwork. As always, if you think I've earned it, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.